Hi, my name is Jane Powell. Welcome to Community Connections brought to you by the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. This is a show showcasing community involvement and today our guest is Dr. Angie Settle from West Virginia Health, right? Hi, thank you. Thank I'm you so glad me. you're here. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, and Dr. Settle, mm -hmm. you are uh, Chief Executive Officer of West Virginia Health Right. Yes, ma'am. But we are here today mm -hmm. to talk about Health Right, but also to talk about an upcoming fundraiser, Bollywood. Yes, Bollywood is a great event that helps three charities in our community. Um, it's our clinic, also mm -hmm. Man and Mill, which is a soup kitchen that helps the homeless and underprivileged here in Charleston, mm -hmm. and also um, Appalachian Children's Course and um, people are probably familiar with them. They have mm -hmm. great choral groups for youth and this actually helps um, fund those students who otherwise would not be able to participate. That's right, so it's one fundraiser but the proceeds are split between three area nonprofits. Yes, three charities are involved. In, and this is the seventh year for it, is that right? Yes, it is a very exciting event. I've never attended anything like it. Um, it's an evening of everything you think about when you think of like the Bollywood, Hollywood, Bollywood. Uh -huh. um, it's, you know, the ethnic decor, the, the attire that they wear, the ladies wear all this colorful attire, um, the food is all Indian, um, they have a great, you know, cocktail hour, and then you, after dinner you actually sit and they have all this dancing, it's just so exciting. M multiple dancers, like the Charleston Ballet participates, um, a lot of the ethnic Indian um, Children, children of the community, the Indian community participate. Oh, I see. So. Sometimes you participate. Yeah. That's you on stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there is a price to be paid to be involved <laughs> in the event. So I always tell people, you know, it's such a great event that I would do cartwheels to be involved. That's so it, it, it's really fun. Yeah, all the CEOs from the charities actually dress up in the um, traditional attire, but it's it's a really unique event, and a lot of people attend. It's almost a thousand people. Wow! So it's it's really amazing. It's a a, a great evening, and you know the tickets are a hundred dollars, or you can do a table of ten for a thousand. But each ticket, um, eighty five dollars of each ticket is tax deductible. Um, there's also sponsorships available um, for businesses. It's just a great event. A lot of professionals attend, mm -hmm. a lot of physicians, lawyers, etc., and then just community people that want to contribute to the cause. Well, so I guess we should talk about the date for Bollywood, yes. which is Sunday, April 23rd. Yes, ma'am. And that's right. And uh, things kick off with a social hour mm -hmm. at 5 o'clock? 5 o'clock, yes. We know it's Sunday, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. traditionally we had it at 6 p.m. This year, since it's on Sunday, we're going to do 5, because, mm -hmm. you know, people, kids going, you know, to school and work, etc. So. Um, yes, starting at 5 this year with the social hour. And then the big event, the kickoff with dinner, et cetera, starts around 6. And then, um, as well as I remember mm -hmm. from uh, hearing about the event in the past, mm -hmm. not only is it local caterers, um, yes. there's several out of the area caterers that Absolutely. come in just for this dinner. Absolutely. Um, they come in from Ohio, I believe it is, and do this. And the food is just phenomenal. Um, it's, it's really it's awesome. Wow, a great way to experience another culture. Yes, and they have a silent auction, a wonderful silent auction that's there throughout the evening. So in addition to dinner and the dancing, the auction's going on, it's just, it's a really great evening that the India Center presents. And the unique thing about this is, is the Indian community, the doctors involved, you know, Dr. Baroud, um, Madhu, um, they basically, they give all this time and their effort and they get nothing in return. Mm -hmm. They take the money um, and cover the expenses, and then the money is split among the three charities. So, I mean, for all their hard work and effort, it's really uh, it's really comes from their heart. Wow! And you mentioned uh, sometimes attendance reaches a thousand people. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure we talked about where it was. It's at the Charleston Civic Center. Yes, the Charleston Civic Center. It's very so glamorous, huge event. Wow, and I know they're doing some remodeling mm -hmm. there right now, mm -hmm. but um, you can still find your way. There's still plenty of parking, no Absolutely. problem getting like in. Like you said, it's the seventh year. They're very experienced with dealing with the event. We've got it down pat. Um, you know, and attire varies, and a lot of times people want to know what to wear. Some choose to wear the, the Indian, like the sari, the outfit. I mean, you'll see ladies in like a cocktail dress. You'll see people in like dressy pants and a shirt. Some men, you know, just in a sports shirt or you know, a suit coat, it, it really varies. So it's, you know, it's pretty much for everybody. Oh, I guess that's a good point. Yeah. Exactly what to wear. I would yes. have probably struggled with that just yes. a little bit. Yes. Okay, good. Good to know yes. that I can just wear what's and in my closet. And you don't have to dance. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, there is dancing, but you get to watch the dancing, unless you're me. 
then you have to dance. <laughs> and then you're on stage dancing. And you're on stage. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Good for you guys. Good for you guys. So we know that the, um, the proceeds benefit mm -hmm. Man Emile, uh, Appalachian Children Choir, yes. and West Virginia Health Right. Yes, and we touched on that Man Emile is a soup kitchen that provides yes. food for our area. And Appalachian Children's Choir um, is just entertainment and Correct. education for mm -hmm. the girls and boys that are involved in that. We know that. Um, why don't we go into detail, uh, since you're the guest, Thank you. um, <laughs> and I have an opportunity to right. learn a little bit more about West Virginia Health Right. Right. Well, now you're talking about my favorite subject. Mm -hmm. um, I've been at Health Right 20 years. Um, West Virginia Health Right is the state's oldest and largest free and charitable clinic. And we say free and charitable clinic, that means our patients are either uninsured or they have Medicaid or they can't have Medicare. But all of the patients are, um, are poverty, poverty mm -hmm. level. Um, they can go up to 200 to 250 percent of federal poverty level. So they're all low income. We do some screening process in terms of income. So we assure the patients there actually do qualify. But it's a huge um, effort in giving from the heart. We have over 400 uh, medical and dental volunteers. We don't have any physicians. 400? Yes. We don't have any physicians or dentists on staff. All of, they, um, all of them come from the community. We have different specialists, orthopedists, neurologists, cardiologists that come in one to two times a month. Um, dentists do the same thing and give, you know, three or four hours of their time. And I kind of refer to it as a quilt of care. If you have uh. enough people giving, you know, an hour, you know, two hours here, three hours there, and they come regularly, you have good coverage for the patients. Now, we do have um, family nurse practitioners, nurses on staff. Um, that are kind of help provide continuity so that if a patient has labs by a volunteer and then they come back, we make sure they're taken care of, that they're not, you know, lost to follow up. Um, but we do medical services, pharmaceutical services, behavioral health services, and that was just started about a year and four months ago. We're addressing um, behavioral health problems, the addiction in our state. There's mm -hmm. therapy for that, um, helping families, helping people that are in addiction um, get into rehab. So and we also do vision services, and then we have a huge health education program that I'm really proud of that has a teaching kitchen that was um, built, provided by our local um, Charleston Rotary Club. They funded wow. that for their centennial. So what we teach patients is um, we're not just up there telling them, you know, here's what you need to do. We actually go to the, you know, farmer's market or the store, buy the healthy items, bring it in. They actually help us, you know, cook the meal. And then, um, then they sit down and they get to eat it. So it's like a, a whole process. You know, we might say, okay, now we're going to do a meal on, you know, fifteen dollars a day, and we actually show them how to spend it, and then actually they get to participate in cooking in it. And then, so it's it's really neat. Wow. And then in the past, and mm -hmm. maybe you still do, but I know mm -hmm. you've had um, uh, yoga classes, absolutely, or dance classes, absolutely. That is. Um, part of that health education program. Mm -hmm. We have three or four classes going every day about cooking, to, um, tobacco cessation, um, healthy heart, diabetes education, wow. ex, you know, sit and fit. Um, actually, mm -hmm. one of the employees from Greater Kanawha has actually volunteered in the past, mm -hmm. Stephanie Heyer, to come over and do a yoga class. So it's everybody in the community that sees the value of what we do that contributes that makes health right what it is. And we actually have um, over 19,000 patients right now, active patients with West Virginia Health Right, and 50% of those patients are still uninsured. So, so. 400 volunteers, yes. 19,000 patients. Yes, absolutely. You're busy. We are very, very busy. Um, it's exciting though, as I said, we added the health education um, uh, clinic, the kitchen I mean, and then we've expanded dental services. We were lucky enough to have two dental chairs donated recently mm -hmm. by a dentist, so we added those, we went from a four chair clinic to a six chair clinic. Wow. Um, we were able to expand the vision and add a second operatory. So instead of just having one room for the volunteer eye doctors to work out of, now we have two so we can see more patients. Um, it's pretty exciting. Wow, that's great. <laughs> um, we should talk about where is West Virginia Health Right? Yes. And how, if I need your services, mm -hmm. how, do right. I, how do I get Very there? Important. How do I find you? Do I make an appointment? Right. Do I walk in? Right. I have lots of questions. Yes, <laughs> and that's great. That's the main thing. I want to get the word out there for people in need because you know, we have an open door policy. We want people to feel welcome. It's very important that my staff are welcoming. Um, it's at 1520 Washington Street East. Oh, I think we have a picture of the yes, building on the screen. Yes, it's about three beautiful. blocks from the Capitol. 
um, straight across from Spiro's Car Wash <laughs> and two doors down from Tudor's. A lot of people know where Tudor's is, so mm -hmm. um, right there on the east end. Um, nice facility. Um, we are open Monday through Friday, like 8 to 5. Um, on Mondays and Thursdays we have additional hours. Sometimes on the weekend we have additional hours. But we do take, um, we take appointments preferably, but if somebody comes in in need, we will take walk-ins. Um, the best way to get more information is just to call our number, and it's 304-414-5930. Um, okay. And that, they can hook me up with the time. Absolutely. That I Times for the classes, get you hooked up for an appointment. Like I said, we're taking anybody, we're taking new patients that are uninsured and underinsured, either have Medicaid or Medicare and are under 250% federal poverty level. And we just do a basic screening process. And then, um, you know, once you're there, it, we try to make it like home. We really do. We Our patients love it. We've had patients that, you know, once they were covered through the Affordable Care Act, maybe left thinking, you know, oh, you know, now I have insurance and they've come back because they miss the way we take care of people. Right. And when we talk about um, where you're located, mm -hmm. uh, the Capitol, we should mention that there's a bus stop right there. Absolutely. Right there in front of our office is a bus stop. So that yes. makes it convenient. Yes. And we are very cognizant mm -hmm. of uh, travel issues and, you know, how much people struggle. So a lot of times I refer to health right as a NASCAR pit stop. We, when somebody rolls in, they have a lot of needs. We don't try to split up care. They may see, you know, a nurse practitioner, get their blood pressure treated today. Then they may go to the dentist. You know, if they're a lady, mm -hmm. they may get a female exam and then they'll end up in the pharmacy and may go to tobacco class. So we try to put fit as much care in a visit as possible for our patients because we know they struggle to get there from transportation. Mm -hmm. It's hard to miss work. It's hard to get child care. Right. So we really try to pack a big punch when they come in and do as much as we can in one day. Wow. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, I kind of wish other doctors thought like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, and, you know, in their defense, they have practices, you know, yes, that they're of trying course to support. They do. But our clinic um, is very mission driven, even though we take Medicaid now because of the Affordable Care Act. We know people struggle to get in. A lot of doctors don't take Medicaid or they take a small percentage. We, you know, when, when patients come in, there's no um, money exchange. You know, it's an after the, it's afterthought. Once they're done and they get taken care of, if they have Medicaid, we turn the bill in. If we get paid, fine. If we don't, fine too. We won't let it drive care, basically. So another reason why a fundraiser like Bollywood is so important. Absolutely, because of you know grants and fundraisers like this, we are able to focus on the patient, and we know you know that they need all that done in one day. Um, unlike a private practice where you have to worry about you know well what's going to get paid today. We you know we bill what we can. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, but we focus on the patient. You know if, if like with Medicaid, it only cover emergency dental uh, extractions. Right but they may need two or three other fillings. Mm -hmm. So if they went to a private doctor's office, they may just get the one tooth pulled. Right. But if they would come to us, they'd get that tooth pulled and the three others filled and maybe get a dental cleaning because it's what they need. It's based on what they need, not, you know, what insurance covers or, the, or anything like and that. And I'm sure if uh, Jean Simpson from Man and Meal yes. or Selena Midkiff yes. from Appalachian Children's Course were here, they would say the very same thing. Absolutely. They do great work. These ladies are phenomenal. I love working with them. It's, it's fun to be involved with them every year. But, you know, Jean does a great service there, you know, with the soup kitchen. You know, patients or our patients, actually, we share mutual patients, really rely on them, you know, to, to eat every day. And then, That's of course, right. with Selena, you know, given uh, given a child song and giving them a place, a platform for that is so it's important. Great. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. I just want to talk one more time about mm -hmm. the date. It is April 23rd, yes, which is Sunday, mm -hmm. at the Charleston Civic Center. And to get tickets, they can yes. call Health Right. Yeah, they can call me at 414-5931, um, or they can go to the Bollywood website, which is BollywoodWestVirginia.org. Great. Great. Um, I wish you all the success. I wish success for all three of the organizations yes. involved and for the Bollywood Committee that make this happen Thank every so year. Much. It is really unique, so everybody should come out and see this. That's great. <laughs> all right. You learned a lot about Bollywood and West Virginia Health Right today. This has been Community Connections brought to you by the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. Come back next time.